This is an exclusive excerpt from the Stuff File program with Peter Anthony Holder. Actress Robin Weigert is best known for her role as Calamity Jane in HBO's Deadwood. She also has a recurring role as attorney Ali Lowen on the hit FX series Sons of Anarchy. But she is also narrating the audiobook The Whip, written by Karen Condazian, which is based on the true story of Charlotte Charlie Parkhurst, a woman who spent 30 years living her life as a man in the Old West. Robin joins us on the line right now from California. Hi, Robin. Hi, how are you? I'm just tickety-boo. Thanks for being on the program with us. <laughs> tickety-boo. <laughs> <laughs> you, you, you have a knack of, of uh, finding roles and, and portraying very strong, independent women, from Calamity Jane to Charlie Parkhurst. Is, is this something you do by luck or design? I think there's a bit of both. I, uh, I love characters who um, have strength of character and, and sort of take on difficult circumstances and, and uh, in the case of both of these, sort of come up with interesting and creative solutions to, to, to difficult situations because I, f- I feel like they let us reflect upon our own lives in a way. You know, when you see a character an extremist and you see them somehow work it out, you know, um, I, I, think it, I think it gives an audience an interesting touch point for their own struggles in their own life. And I feel like those characters kind of turn me on. I like them, you know. Charlie uh, Parkhurst was a real woman that a lot of people don't know a lot about. Were you familiar with her before taking on this Not role? before I read Karen's book, no. And it was a real page-turner. I mean, it's, her, her life is, is absolutely fascinating. And um, she uh, defied the odds in every possible way really she she uh somehow survived on her own and she and she was you know orphaned and she had ever i mean everything was stacked against her and uh she suffered a number of tragedies some of the, some of them um karen imagined and some of them she researched and i think anytime you're looking at a character from from that era and this was true for calamity jane as well it's it's going to be a combination of truth and fiction because Things weren't perfectly documented back then, and especially when somebody's lived an unusual life like that, there's a certain mythology that grows up around them, that, that, and they become fictionalized even during their own era. So she did a kind of interesting job of excavating and inventing at the same time and creating a very rich landscape. Um, and um, some of the research she did was just simply to do with what life was like then and there's a, she has a lot of detail around things like how corsets were fastened up and the buttons buttoned and you know what this and that might have smelled like and tasted like it's a very sensual book full of deta- imagined uh, rich detail and um uh you can sort of feel that it might have been written by an actor because you can tell she's imagined herself inside all of those experiences um, and brought a lot of her life, own life experience to it as well, I think. Well, the fact that it's written by an actor it must be a testament to you because, I mean, here's a woman who's written this character, knows her inside out. She could have done the audiobook. I know. I know. What an honor. I, <laughs> she, she probably would have been marvelous at it. And she actually wrote a character that I think whatever it would be, 15 years ago, she, she, she would have played, um, uh, I'm guessing at her age, I don't know, but um, this sort of really passionate Italian actress, um, and uh, Karen could play Italian in, the, in a heartbeat. I, I, think, I, think, I think with her last name, Condasian, she's, she's um, actually, what is that? Um, Armenian. Armenian, thank you. Uh, the word I was searching for, but she feels Italian, and she's, she wrote a character, I think almost for herself at the time she started it, um, who is just uh, a wonderful counterpoint to Charlie and is in a lot of the book, and the dynamic between them was a lot of fun to play. Um, some of my favorite stuff to do in the audiobook, which was the scenes between those two, because it's, it's switching back and forth between such extreme opposites, and it's a lot of fun. In doing an audiobook, you you have to do all the characters basically. You are a trained stage actress. Is is this putting all your training to the test and doing an audiobook? You know, it taps into a lot of different things that 
that that are in your grab bag, I guess I would say, as an actor. It's um, and it's a challenge that's very very specific to this medium, and unlike anything else I'd ever tried to do before. Um, and I think what I was just describing is a big part of it. It's the fact that you're having to switch back and forth and back and forth and back and forth. And sometimes you're doing scenes that have six characters in them, and you have to keep them all not just at the tip of your tongue, because they all have a different sound from each other so that the, the listener can hear the differences amongst the characters, but you also have to keep them in your heart and feel the differences um, in where they're coming from. <laughs> so it's a little bit like, uh, I, I think it, I think it's some hybrid between being an actor and being a director because you're, you're needing to be on top of the scene, looking down at it and kind of orchestrating it as well as inside of it. Um, because you're, you're, you're painting the scenery with the descriptive passages and then you're, you're embodying the people when you, when you step into their dialogue. And it's, it's, it's really uh, wonderful. I sort of recommend it to any actor. It's a wonderful exercise. Um, it uses a lot of different muscles. Is this the first audiobook you've done? Yes, it is. Because I'd love to do more. I, I really enjoyed it a lot. Because because we, we know you from, from television. We know you from, from cable. We you've, you've done stage. Is is this almost like a, a different muscle for you when, when you step behind the mic to read an audiobook? Is that is that totally different from what you've done before? Yeah, I mean, they're all, of course, related, and they're in sort of a constellation. I mean, they're all related to each other. And I think the more you can stretch um, through whatever medium, the, mo the more you have to bring to all the others. So um, I, I feel like there was something I took from this exercise that I can probably bring to other things that I do, especially if I ever um, did direct, which is something that's always been of interest to me but a little intimidating to me. I think that this as an exercise would be very useful for that because you're keeping many characters in you at once, not just the one character whose arc you're following. Yes, it's a book about Charlie Parkhurst, but you have to be everybody in the story. And so you have to hold the whole story inside of you at the same time, which I think is a director's art. You know, when, they, when, a, when there's a good director, they are all the characters at once. They carry the story inside their body, you know. Um, so I think that's what it would most closely pertain to later, maybe in my life sometime. You are best known for playing uh, a woman of the Old West, an infamous woman of the Old West, in Deadwood on television. If you had the opportunity to bring Charlie Parkhurst either to the small or big screen, would you like to do it now that you've done the audiobook? You know, I find her fascinating, and it would be a really interesting challenge to do that. Yes, I mean, the the character is so strongly suggested by Jane, and of course I don't want to tread the same ground, but I do think there are enough differences that I could find something very interesting to play there. And, um, and I think it's a story that deserves to be made into a movie because it's a fascinating story, and it's a very American story. I think that Charlie was the first woman to vote, although she voted as a man, <laughs> but um, there are at least some who believe that she may be the first to have actually gotten her, slipped her vote in there um, because she was passing at the time, and that's an interesting historical tidbit as well. Um, I think she, I think she's a sort of standalone character in history, and, and, and her story deserves to be told, so um, maybe Karen will someday uh, write the script. <laughs> be very interesting. And since you've now played these two women of the Wild West, and from two very different perspectives, how do you think you would have survived in that time yourself? In other words, how different are you from the two characters you're now best known for? Well, I, I think that there were, sadly, only three alternatives back then. Um, one was to attach yourself in some form to a man, uh, marriage, uh, or at least to have a, a kind of companion who could, could, could take you through uh, because you needed male protection. Um, or you could be, um, you know, uh, I mean, a lot of women became who, who didn't manage to get married would end up becoming ladies of the night and, you know, um, prostitutes, and even there they'd be attached to somebody who would be their pimp or, you know, whatever, whatever that was. So that was, you know, path number two. And this it presents itself as the third um, alternative. I mean, truly, uh, women did not have a lot to stand on on their own back then. 
so what would what what could one do as a woman alone um besides try to sort of make it as a man um yourself uh and I think Karen had done some research that certainly suggested that there were many, many more of these women in disguise than, um, you know, than, than these few figures who have become sort of iconic. There were many, many more of them sort of around because it was, it was option three. <laughs> it was option three, you know. If you couldn't get yourself an attachment that would provide you with enough of a shield or protection, you sort of didn't have a choice but to try to rough it in that way. You're asking me what I would have done. Um, I think, you know, I, I, I think had I not been able to marry um, somehow uh, for whatever combination of reasons, um, you know, it, this might have been an option to try to see if I could do something like that. But um, probably I would have tried to see if I could attach myself to somebody who had social position. I mean, I probably would have been a more cowardly uh, type of woman. I I don't know. I mean, I just I I don't know how I would have made it. It's it, in other words, you're talking about people who did not come from social advantage, um, and who were or both of these characters uh, orphaned young, or or in Calamity's case, I think probably just ran away from an abusive home or something like that. In Jane's case, but uh, but in in uh, this other character's case, was orphaned, and you know, so from that place, you have very few options. Um, and it's probably true today as well, but uh, you know society's set up a little bit differently now. But uh, so uh, it's interesting to imagine, isn't it? I mean, just what it would have been like to be a woman, period, back then. Um, well, how you... how you know how many compromises you would have to make, and and what form they would take, and and there really is there was really no perfect way. Um, there were just people who who did their best. <laughs> so. Well, you certainly brought them to life, yeah. uh, first with uh, Calamity Jane on HBO's Deadwood and now with um, Ch- Charlotte Charlie Parkhurst in the book yeah. The Whip. I thank you very, very much, uh, Robin, thank for taking the time to be on the program with us. Well, it's a pleasure, and thanks for talking. I appreciate it. Actress Robin Weigert. The audiobook is called The Whip, written by Karen Condazian. You can find the audiobook at audible.com and also on amazon.com. And you can go to my website to thestufffile.com to the What's On page for this show, which is show number 0182, and you'll find the links. You'll also find links to Robin's website. You've just heard an exclusive excerpt from the Stuff File program with Peter Anthony Holder. To hear any or all of the full hour-long shows, visit thestufffile.com. Stuff is spelled S-T-U-P-H. That's thestufffile.com. A presentation of Flying Fish Communications.